Hi guys, I hope you're all well. Today I want to talk about a fitness challenge called Project 50, which I will be taking up in the coming weeks. I am really excited for this challenge. It's going to be documented completely on my Instagram, so please go give it a follow if you want to join me on this challenge. But yes, it's something that I have heard of a few times and I just wanted to dive into it. I just want to give it a go. Now everyone that I know of has heard of 75 Hard, which of course is quite a hard fitness challenge for 75 days. So Project 50 is kind of the in-between little brother of 75 Hard. Of course, it's only 50 days, so you have got that time restraint brought down but also the challenges within it are more feasible for the average person like you and me so today i want to tell you about project 50 about how i'm going to tackle it what my plans are and yeah just see how it goes i'm really really excited for it and i hope if you come and join me too you're excited as well So Project 50 is a mental toughness challenge that lasts for 50 days in a row. So for these 50 days you have a few rules that you must follow each day and if you fail any of the rules or if you don't complete them on that day then you have to start back at day one. Now of course whether you want to start back on day one the next day and keep going but obviously for another 50 days that's up to you or you can take a break as well there's no rules there you just have to complete these 50 days in a row and stick to the rules for every single day. Now, 75 hard, which I am going to reference quite a lot in this video as well, is very tough with drinking, I think it's three gallons of water a day or something stupid like that, two 45 minute workouts a day, one has to be outside, so imagine it in the winter weather trying to do that, like, no thank you. Um, you have to read 10 pages of a non-fiction book, you have to take a progress picture every day there's lots and lots of rules and so what i like about project 50 is it does give you rules as well but they are more manageable and especially if you are a person in a full-time job or you don't have all the time in the world to do all these things it's definitely a step into the realm of fitness challenges without overwhelming you and thinking that you just can't do it and i especially worry for like the gallons of water that you've got during content you five hard as well like surely if you're like not everyone can have the same amount of water it worries me it worries me but yeah, it's fine. So I've got my glasses on because I do have the Project 50 rules in front of me and that's what I want to talk about. So I'm actually gonna zoom you in. I'm going to sit back so we can still feel intimate and close to each other, but actually I'm like all the way back here. So Project 50. So Project 50, what are the rules? So rule one is wake up before 8 a.m. every day. Now, maybe for some people that would be quite easy. Now for me in the week, of course, I start work at 9 a.m. So I'm usually up before 8 a.m. because I have to get ready, do my skincare, do my exercise, all that sort of stuff. But on the weekend, I could easily sleep in till like midday and not have an issue with it, especially if I have no plans or I'm just filming YouTube or whatever, because right now it's dark outside. Yeah, because of my ring light, as you can see in my glasses, you can't really tell. So it doesn't matter what time I get up. So waking up every day before 8 a.m. is going to be interesting because it will set you up for the day. It will make sure that you don't miss out on most of the day. You don't stay up all night playing video games or procrastinating or watching movies or whatever and you are prioritizing your daytime where you can get stuff done and feel accomplished. I know I definitely feel more accomplished the earlier I wake up. It also does say that even though you have to wake up before 8am you have to make sure that you are sleeping right so this website that I am using that I will link below says that you must get at least six hours of sleep a minimum. So say you're going to bed at four and waking up at eight, that doesn't count. You only got four hours. So you still need to make sure that you're getting good sleep in this challenge. So for me, I normally go to bed around 10 p.m. I will read my Kindle, that helps me fall asleep, and then I'll get up around 6 a.m. to do my exercises. So for me, I think it'll be quite a good, easy, part of the challenge but of course it does come to those weekends where we all enjoy lying and seeing how it goes but maybe I'll take an advantage of it and be like it's 7 59 I'll get up now <laughs> like I've got a minute it's fine <laughs> so rule number two is do your morning routine for one hour with no distraction so what that means to me is my morning routine 
usually is wake up and go on Reddit, which isn't good for anyone. I end up lying in bed for hours, easily could just go on TikTok for like three hours in the morning. It's not healthy at all. So setting up a good morning routine does set you up for the day and make sure that you're getting the important stuff done. So for me, for an hour morning routine, it would be skincare, it would be journaling, it would be meditation, it would be just being present with myself for that time because then I know that it's done and I can easily drag that out to an hour and I also have a nighttime playlist but I can use this in the morning as well I can play it through I've got a Bluetooth um, waterproof speaker really good really cheap on Amazon too I think it's a Sony it's over there somewhere it's really good though but yeah highly recommend that but yes morning routine get up make the bed have a shower probably have a shower so my i think my morning routine will come after my exercise because i can have a shower after I exercise i can listen to music i can do my skincare i can get dressed for the day i can journal i can meditate and just have some me time and that just sounds lovely that sounds like a really nice piece to your day which sets you up right because it's calm it's peaceful it's relaxing and yeah it just helps melt away all those worried feelings that you might feel otherwise Rule number three is exercise for one hour every day. So for me, this will change depending on the day. Some days I may go to the gym for an hour. Some days I might go to a club or a group for an hour. Some days I might just go out for a walk for an hour if I'm not feeling the gym or whatever, or if it's really icy and I don't want to drive in the ice, you know, you've got to be careful. So I've got hair on my lip and it's really bugging me. So exercise for one hour is literally as it says on the tin, exercise for an hour and you're done. An hour is 1 24th of your day. I don't know, I can't simplify that, obviously, but it's not a lot of time. I think it's like 4% of your day or something I saw on Pinterest, which of course, if it's on Pinterest, it must be true. But yeah, it's hardly any time at all, really. And even a brisk walk counts as your hour. So it's chill. Just go for a walk and you're done, sorted great <laughs> but yeah that's the one thing that i think will be quite easy to stick to next is read 10 pages a day now with 75 hard they have to be 10 non-fiction pages so like self-help books autobiographies that sort of stuff things that will make you more knowledgeable in your life however with project 50 you only have to read 10 pages of any book they even say you can read it of a magazine you know like you could buy a cosmopolitan or a heat magazine in town and read that and it's fine but for me i try and read every night anyway so this won't be too much of a problem i'll just have to keep an eye on my kindle of what the first pages because obviously I do it in percentage of the book I try to read 10% of a book every night which actually I've been quite good at um doing that so that's really good but yes reading 10 pages of any book of course if you're not a big reader that can be quite hard but I'm really excited for that part of the challenge and getting through more books I'm currently reading The Secret Life of Bees which I'm really enjoying literally I was at like 2% on my kindle in terms of progress and in one night I got to like 40% because I just didn't want to put it down it was so so good so yeah Yes, very excited for this aspect of the challenge. The fifth rule is dedicate one hour towards a new skill. Now in the article that I've read on this, she says that one of her days a week for her hour of a skill is tennis class. So of course she does a different exercise for her hour of exercise, but then she goes to a tennis class, a one-on-one -on -one coaching session, and is trying to build up her skill in tennis. So I thought about that and I thought, okay, what skill do I want to really hone in on? And one thing that I really want to do is I want to write a book. I'm currently partway through said book. I'm about 43 pages through. A4 pages though, so I think that's quite good. Um, and, and like size 10 font as well. I don't know why I chose such a small font. But anyway, I want to get better at writing. And so I thought one hour a day I could spend writing a short story. So every day it will be 50 short stories and every day I choose a, diff a different prompt from the internet and I have to write a short story based on that prompt. And I think that will really help my writing. It will help me come out of my comfort zone because I kind of stick to genres and niches that I like. And so it'd be nice to explore new niches, different things, like especially like things like sci-fi and romance aren't really for me. So I think that'd be really cool to see if I end up writing a sci-fi short story and stuff like that. But I'll do that every day for an hour and I think it'll be really, really fun because it'll get my creative juices 
<laughs> creative juices flowing, not throwing. <laughs> it'll scratch that creative itch that I always have and hopefully it'll improve my skills in writing anyway because I will have written so many different types of stories so that's something that I'm quite excited about too and I do have an app on my MacBook which is called Focus Timer which you can focus which will give you a timer and an alarm at the end of the hour or however long you set the timer for that will help you focus and you can use that as your screensaver and stuff like that so you can see where you're at and yeah I think that'll be really good too. And then the final rule and the one that's a bit more flippant and a bit more up for debate is follow a healthy diet. Now it doesn't actually say what type of diet you should follow so for me I have decided that I'm going to continue with my calorie counting that's really helped me at the moment and just sticking to a certain amount of calories that I must eat every day. Currently I allow myself weekends to not calorie count um, but obviously if you have a like 4,000 calorie day on the weekend then you've ruined all your progress from the week so I think it'll be really interesting to see how that actually goes and how well I stick to it. Alongside this I also want to cut out takeaways for the 50 days which I don't think will be too hard. I currently have one takeaway a month so that means I'll just miss out on one takeaway but I think that's absolutely fine. Um, that doesn't include eating out, it's just fast food um, and yeah just eating properly. So I currently try and follow the Mediterranean diet but keeping up my fish and meat intake, keeping up my nuts and omega-3 intake, um, taking my multivitamins and my vitamin D and stuff like that and just being mindful of what I'm putting in my body. But yeah, my healthy diet will be calorie counting with no takeaways at all. It all has to be either eating out with other people, so there's a reason for it, so say it's someone's birthday or just in a big event, I can go out but make sure I don't exceed my calories or I have to cook at home or have ready meals or whatever. Whatever fits in my calories is what I'm allowed. But yes, that is project 50 and that is how I'm going to tackle it. As I said, it goes on for 50 days, so it's just over, um, it's just under two months. <laughs> it's like a month and three weeks or whatever, so. It's not a huge amount of your time, but it could completely change how you look at life, how you view things you do, your habits, um, stuff like that. It just really helps zone you in on where you actually want to be and what you actually want to do and what you can do when you put your mind to it, which I think is really, really good. So this is my next challenge. As I said at the start, I am going to be documenting it documenting i can't talk today documenting it all on my instagram so please go follow me there if you don't already because i think that'll be really fun to see how it goes and if you want to send me story prompts as well send me story prompts because i think that'll be really fun but yes that is this video of course take a look at the link below about project 52 because i think it will be really really fun to do and yes i hope that this journey goes well and of course I will see you on the other side to let you know how it did, how I did it and if I fail at any point I'll tell you about that too because why not but yes I'll take my glasses off now so I stop shining the light back in your face and only shine it in my face but yes I hope you enjoyed this video please let me know of any fitness challenges that you'd like me to do I do have 75 hard to do on my list as well but of course I'm dipping my toes in first before I go like head first into the pools of 75 hard and it's cultish mentality yay but yeah, let me know about other fitness challenges, what you're doing at the moment, how your life is going. Just have a chat with me in the comments and like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and if you want to follow my journey and I will see you next time. Bye!